Thank you, everybody, for joining us today on VJ Day. I hope you've enjoyed the NAMS and our partner museums offering so far as part of our digital festival of commemoration. But today is something particularly special uh, and something that I myself am so excited about. It's my absolute privilege to say that we are joined today by two men who stepped up to be counted in the Second World War and have again inspired us all with their actions in the latest crisis the world has faced. I'm thr absolutely thrilled that we are, with the wonders of modern technology, joined by Captain Sir Tom Moore and Private Joseph Hammond, both of whom served in Burma in the Second World War and have very generously given up their time to talk to us today and share their memories. I'll just do a, a brief introduction first. So, I mean, well, not that either of you need much introduction, but Cap uh, Thomas Moore, known to us all now as Captain Sir Tom Moore, is a former British Army officer who has really captured the public imagination uh, with his recent philanthropic work. But one of the most exciting things that we're going to talk about today is Captain Tom's service in India and Burma during the Second World War uh, and his role in both in, in the infantry and then later in armoured warfare. After the war, he worked as a managing director of a concrete company and was an avid motorcycle rider, perhaps a little bit more of which we'll discuss later. Most significantly, though, on the 6th of April 2020, at the age of 99, he began to walk around his garden in aid of the NHS during the COVID-19 pandemic, with the goal of raising £1,000 by his 100th birthday. The final raise was an incredible £38.9 million, £38.9 million. Pounds. Uh, and I can honestly say that you completely captured the hearts of the nation uh, and, and gave everybody a lot of inspiration and hope during some pretty tough times. Now... The, we're also pleased to be, to be joined by Private Joseph Hammond, uh, who was born in Ozu Akira on the 10th of May 1925 in Ghana, or, or was then the Gold Coast. He joined the army as a driver on the 31st of July 1943, and he served in the Second World War in Burma as well, but with the 82nd West African Division of the Royal West African Frontier Force. He returned home in 1946 uh, and was there to take part in several of the incidents that led to Ghanaian's eventual independence uh, and joining the Commonwealth. And after the war, he worked with a construction company uh, and as a store manager at the Ambassador Hotel, which is now the Movenpick Ambassador Hotel, and helped pre prepare for Ghana's independence in 1957. Since 2017, he's become an ambassador for the Veterans Administration Ghana, uh, joining VAG teams on patriotism, educational tours to some schools in the metropolis. And beside lecture on the history of Ghana, he undertakes social activities in his community. In the year 2020, and taking a cue from Captain Sir Tom Moore, Private Hammond decided to embark on a two kilometer daily walk along the Ozu Oxford Street for seven days to raise funds to support COVID-19 frontline workers as well as vulnerable military veterans. I think this is the first time that you two have actually met, is that correct? Absolutely right. I've, I've never met him before. I'm delighted to meet him at this time. It really is a joy to meet somebody like him. How fantastic. So, so as a first time, I'm meeting Captain uh, uh, Moore, Tom Moore, and uh, I've been waiting anxiously for this day, very anxious to, to meet him. And I'm extremely happy that today I've seen his face across through technology and we are speaking to each other. I thank the almighty God that he has offered me this opportunity. I'm very proud about it. When you joined the army, and, and Private Joseph, perhaps I could start with you. You know, why did you join the army? Uh, why did you decide to, to join up and fight for, on Britain's behalf? Well, um, I joined the army in 1943. Whenever, when I was then at the senior school, whenever I see soldiers, they inspire me. Always they inspire me. So I decided concretely, firmly, that after my education, I will join the army. And I did precisely so. I joined the army in 1943, um, and uh, Gokos Regiment. And later on, we were asked to go to Burma to fight the war. Well, because I wanted to help the British Empire. We were part of the British Empire. And so I was very eager and willing to serve. And I did precisely so. I joined the army, one because I wanted to help the British Empire. Second, to help the Gokos, my country too. And so I joined the army to do that. We were asked to go to Burma, India and Burma, to fight the war. We went 
10 of us were drafted from the unit. Um, myself, Joseph, Hammond, Ibiokai, Grantian, and uh, Amonu, Kensil, Anoba, uh, Anefi, Ebi Mensa, uh, Nunu, and Lomoti. These 10 people were drafted. I know we were friends at the unit. So we were drafted to go to Burma. November 1943, middle of November. Well, a week later, we were all taken to the harbor and we saw a very huge ship, HMS Sakashia, with 2,500 troops on board, approximately. So we also joined them, the 10 of us. We were drafted to go and then we were attached to 3rd Infantry Battalion. Battalion of Infantry, we were drafted to, we were mechanics to service the American jeeps whenever there is a technical hitch. That was why we were drafted to go from the workshops, 3rd Advanced Base Workshops. And our major was Major, uh, major Brunner. He was in charge of the, uh, sec, uh, 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 two IC, the second command to Captain Chaplin. We had other officers, Lieutenant Booth, and so forth. So it's, a, it's, it's amazing you remember all their names. It's fantastic. Um, Captain Sir Tom, <laughs> if, if I could ask you, obviously, you joined the army in, you joined the army in 1940, uh, and initially you joined your, your local regiment, but then you were transferred to, to, to tanks and the, arm, and the armored corps. Um, did, I mean, what was, what was that like for you? Because that was qu obviously quite different, having gone through training as one thing, to then be moved into something else. I think, uh, I think we've got to go back to 1939 when the war broke out and it, it, it so happened that all men from age of 20 to 35 were eligible for conscription. But as soon as I was 20, which was in 1940, I was immediately conscripted into the army. At that time, you had the choice of the army, the navy, the air force, or the coal mines. Actually, I wasn't given much opportunity, but I was conscripted into the 8th Battalion, the Duke of Wellington's Regiment at Otley in West Yorkshire. And the whole uh, unit was conscripted from people within the West Riding of Yorkshire. So we all knew very virtually one another. Uh, after a, a basic training there, we then the battalion was moved to the south of England where we were put on coastal defence. Uh, because at that time, it was anticipated that the Germans may uh, invade uh, the coast of England uh, yeah. and it was quite a, an enormous risk. Fortunately, it didn't happen. So meanwhile, the, the battalion were moved from various parts of the coast for defence. And I fortunately, after certain training, I was uh, uh, sent to the officer cadet training unit at Droitwich. And after I'd served there and been successful in being uh, commissioned into the, in the 9th Battalion, the Duke of Wellington's. Do you mind me asking, um, did you know much about the fighting that was going on in, in India and, and, and Burma and the Far East at the time? I mean, you, you said that you obviously you'd been down doing coastal defence in, in preparation in case the Germans had, had crossed the channel. But did you know much about the fighting taking place in other parts of the world? And, and uh, now there were only many uh, concentrated what was going on in Europe uh, because that was right on our doorstep and the Germans were doing very well. They pushed the British army out of Europe and they all had to <laughs> come home to, to Britain via Dunkirk, which was an, an epic episode in uh, removal of one large army from one country to another. Fortunately, thousands and thousands of people, a British army were saved and came home safely, ready to fight again. Private Joseph, I mean, 
did you where from where you were at home during this period were you following the news did did you know what was happening in the war was i mean how was was it being reported to you as well exactly uh when i was at the senior school we had a newspaper it's called war bulletin so we have been receiving what actually was going on around the world we know much about the, from the school we know much about the fighting uh, about dunkirk and all these things and uh, you know, Captain Tom mentioned, I knew, I knew of uh, Dunkirk, what went on there from France, at Dover. What he said was true. Everybody thought that the Germans would cross, you see, from Dover, because it's very close to, long, uh, to England. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. We were all happy because we were also following the news from Gold Coast, our former name, Gold Coast. I was interested in the war. So with all these things, our newsman, Ataji, he used to brief the whole country. We have been listening every day. So I knew, I knew much about this fighting. Until I joined the army, a lot of things I have to take. Only time is not on our side. But well, we went to the war, as Captain said. We were attached to the a third infantry battalion, battalion of infantry, battalion of infantry, where we did exactly so. We were divided. Okay, Grant and myself, we went to third battalion, Amonu and Krenzel and Anoban, we went to second battalion, and then the others who went to first battalion. It drafted all of us. And then to repair the American jeeps, it was quite good for the jungles, because where there are no accessible roads, we all turn to infantrymen, because from the inception, we were all trained as soldiers, like the medical field. You were trained as a medical officer, later on you branch to your specialized course, like gynecologist, surgery, dentist, the same thing in the army. We had our lieutenants, electricians, mechanics, exactly. So we also, were drafted to help. So we went in and we did exactly a wonderful job. Uh, when there is no accessible road in the jungle, everybody becomes an infantryman. Before we were trained as soldiers, we come as no more mechanics but infantryman. And I mean, what was your what was your training like? Um, was it, did, you, did you feel really well prepared when you were going out? Did you feel like the training was good? Uh, were, you, were you afraid? Because obviously the, the, the Japanese had quite a fearsome reputation. Yes. Um, you know, we were trained to match the Japanese. They were the most ferocious fighters in the world that I have ever seen. When a Japanese is captured as a prisoner, he has disgraced his entire family. But when he dies, it's an honor to the whole family. You can imagine such mentality from his infancy, his death, and they grew up with it. So they fight ferociously. Every Japanese who had a battle from wanted to die to go to the Almighty God. You can imagine this. So the fighting was terrible. It, it's beyond my comprehension, honestly. I was not in the 81st Division. I was in the 82nd which our uh, uh, general was General Sockwell. He was in charge of 82nd. And the brigade commander was Brigadier E. Weston, who unfortunately was wounded fatally in the war, 1945. Now, we fought them in 82nd Division. I'll say much about that, but because I was not in the 81st Division, we changed them at Ibutiton. Six men, six men. So the first man, they went into the war first because they, they, they arrived in India in the later part of 1942. So they had their training earlier before us. And you know, the Japanese, um, honestly speaking, they invaded India too. They went to India, captured some of the front line, some of the border places. So when our troops came, otherwise the war would have been two wars, one in India and one in Burma. But our commanders decided that no, we shift the Japanese. We chase them into Burma so that the war will be won. 
they did so. So they established their bridgehead. All our supplies went there. And then our troops started fighting first. Luckily, they were able to do that. We pushed them into Burma. And then we changed them, six men, six men. We changed them at 80 seconds, changed them at Butido. After changing them, we fought ferociously against the Japanese. And then they went near the Irrawaddy River, the main river. Some of our troops fought in Akia, the southern side, the signal regiment. We also fought at Arawadi side. And there was a town called Pakoku. This Pakoku happened to be a big town. They intended to cross, but they realized they would delay and we will massacre them. So they changed their strategy and plan and moved southward. We followed them. We started fighting, fighting. Sometimes the fighting is so intense Three days we could not push the Japanese. It was a ding dong battle. And we used to, uh, you know, solicit the help from our artillery, our artillery. We give them their positions. They bombard the position, softening the ground. Then our troops move in. This, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stop you there because we'll pick this up a little bit more. Um, but I wanted to, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I wanted to talk to uh, ask you, uh, Captain Sir Tom, about when you found, obviously you found out you were going to India and you were going to Burma. I mean, were you surprised that you were going to fight in an Indian Armoured Brigade? Because you ended up with the 50th Indian Armoured Brigade, is that correct? No, no not, uh, not really. I mean, uh, when uh, I joined the, uh, the Nars Battalion, it was being converted from infantry to armor, uh, so, and we knew that, and we knew that we were going to India, and eventually our object would be to uh, go into Burma to fight the Japanese. But initially, we had to have a lot of training in the new new uh, tanks, and that was the first thing we had to do once we got to India, was to start to learning how to, about tanks and about armored warfare and we, we, we joined the, the 50th Indian Tank Brigade which composed uh, of various uh, Indian units but we all had there to turn to, to, to quickly learn to be uh, soldiers who could fight the Japanese with tanks and we had a brigade commander who was a very, very good commander. He was quite severe, but after all, we were in a hurry. There was no time for us to waste being uh, playing about. We had to very quickly learn the art of what we were drawn for. And uh, although it was, it was quite hard work, we, we had, had to do it. We knew what we were doing and we knew where we were going to go eventually. And were you, I mean, were you, did, what did you think about the Japanese before you, you got there to, to fight them? Uh, Project has told us all about, you know, what, what, what they thought and how, and how they understood. What about you? I mean, did you share uh, his understanding of them? Did you feel like the Japanese were a very strong and, 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 and dangerous enemy? That's true. We knew, we knew that and we knew that we had a, an, an enemy who was quite ruthless and for their own, their own good. They were no, not afraid of dying. They would rather die than be taken a prisoner of war. So we knew that we were going to fight a, a very, very difficult enemy. And that's what we set out to do. We knew that was our task. But initially, um, we had to get our training complete. So we were good enough to fight against the Japanese. And that's what we did. And then we had a, our first move into into Burma. So, I mean, can I ask you, um, Captain Stop, I mean, what did you think about Burma? I mean, what, 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 was your, what were your first impressions of, of, of the country? Well, we knew that it was rather a difficult country and we knew it was a very difficult one for tanks. And in fact, it was a difficult country for anyone. The infantry probably found it worse with the wind tanks we had to stay on what was generally good ground, although it was jungle, but where it was swampy ground, 
we really couldn't go because the tanks were not very good at digging in uh, that sort of ground. But that was our, our object. Our object was to go and fight against the Japanese. Initially, we really, we, although we were there, we were there as a, a holding operation because the uh, main uh, battle was going on in Europe following through the, from the desert. And although we were there available, we knew that the battle in, the, in Europe had to be dealt with before it would re we could really get on very well in, in Burma. Because first of all, the way we, we were not really much short of equipment, but we were getting some of it was equipment that had been used in the desert. And we really, as I said, we were in a holding operation till the battle in Europe could be completed. And once it was, then we could make the, the battle in, in Burma started. And it really started in the battle at Imphal and Kohima, which was north of where we were. And that's where the, the Japanese were held and finally it's pushed back. But the British Army and the Indian Army have fought a ferocious battle against a, an impossible enemy, the Japanese, built with the force and the integrity of our army. We gradually pushed it back, and that was the start of the move into Burma uh, following the enormous battle at Enfold on Kohima are the British and Indian troops. It was a, a, a fearsome battle, and many, many people were killed in, in a hand-to-hand -hand, uh, hand -hand battle, battle in, in that part of... And then in the south, where we were, then we could start moving forward and do our part in pushing the Japanese backwards. And Private Joseph, if I could just uh, come back, back to you on that. I mean, you were talking so much about, about the fighting in Burma. I mean, what, what was your main impression of the country? I mean, as a, as a driver, I mean, what, could, could, you, could you do your job uh, that you've been trained and sent there to do? Exactly. I was a driver, a mechanic. I was trained mechanic, how to fix technical hitch on these vehicles. So, but the place is a jungle place. You know, they have, bamboo jungle. We in Africa, we have oak trees jungles. Our jungles were thicker, but they have a very bamboo tree, very thick jungles. And there are sometimes no accessible road at all. So we have to, that was why we used the American jeeps. It was very good to maneuver easily through the jungle, uh, bamboo trees. You know, um, the impression is that it's the same like Africa. They have jungles there. And that makes the whole thing very difficult. And they have hyenas and uh, snakes and so many things, you see. But because of the fighting, these tigers, and they, they all bolt away from the fighting area because of the guns, shooting the guns. But they have so many snakes and then these, and uh, hailers, plenty there. We, we continue the fighting. I will tell you briefly. Uh, we continue the fighting. Sometimes there are no, there is no food for three or four days. We waited for the aircraft parachute to drop our food and then also the ammunition to continue the fighting. So we crossed the river at Mabu at one time. Our people, Six of them made a mistake. Instead of maneuvering quickly to land at the other side, they, they, they realized they were drifting to enemy position. So they hurriedly tried to change their error. Then all of a sudden, their uh, uh, rubber didn't get capsized. It was all of them again. We saw them going. What could we do? It was a war. Nothing we could do. So. They continue, we continue the fighting. Gradually, gradually, gradually. We lost six men there. We continue. Now, there was a town called Kindongi. When we arrived there, 
they saw that this man eye, the left one, officers too saw it. It was protruding. Ah, why? All the troops said, come on, your eye is protruding. This one. So I was flown by Piper Plain, the officers, two wounded soldiers and myself. We were flown to India, Pune City. And from Pune City, 10 miles away, there was a very huge hospital, 40th military hospital for Africans, Indians, Europeans, all at the hospital. And it had six operation theaters as far back as 1943-44, six operation theaters. It was there my medical officer, Lieutenant Crockett, said it was contaminated. Probably they shot somebody, they wounded somebody. I touched the person, the blood went into my hand. And it dried. We were fighting, so no handkerchief. So probably I touched my face. And the disease, I realized, it was mentioned in my original discharge book called Palititis and Crudotitis. You know, the medical term for my disease, Palititis and Crudotitis. I was healed, actually. It took some time at the hospital. So I was given category C to go to Burma again, but to do light duties behind the fighting. Fortunately, 1945, the war came to an end. So my colleagues there, after the war, General Slim, who happened to be promoted to Field Marshal, he addressed all the troops. We have done marvelously well to defeat the Japanese. He congratulated us, our two divisions, 81st, 82nd Division, 81st commanded by General Wuna, 82nd General Stockwell, he commanded all of them. But our supreme commander was General Slim. What I wanted to do is, um, I wanted just to show you, obviously that the, the thing that unites you both is your, is your service in the Far East, in the campaign in Burma. And I just wanted to show you a picture, if, if you will, quickly of the, the Burma Star Medal, because I was wondering if you could just tell us, and starting with you, Captain Sir Tom, I was wondering if you could just tell us, what does the Burma Star Medal mean to you? I think this is, of all the, the medals I've got, that is the most important one. I'm very proud of, of being a holder of the Burma Star, and it does stand out amongst all the others, because really the Burma area was one of the most difficult and dangerous parts of the, of the war that there was. And I am very proud to be a holder of the Burma Star. It really is a magnificent uh, honour to carry, to carry one. Thank you so much. And, and Private Joseph, what does, the, what does the Burma Star Medal mean to you? Myself. Yes. It brings back memories of the fighting. And I feel very, very proud too that I'm involved in this war. I feel very, very proud. The Burma star is a very special star. Among my medals, it's stars. Because I, I, we had a very terrible and tough time there. That's all I was doing. Gentlemen, you've inspired us so much through your actions 75 years ago, but also today. And I just wanted to show you a video of two members of the, currently, of the current serving British Army who want to let you know how much you've inspired them and how much what you've done means to them today. Hello Captain Sir Tom Moore. Hello Private Joseph Hammond. I am Trooper Birkus, part of the Household Cavalry Mounted Regiment in the Blues and Royals. I am Trooper Anison in the Household Cavalry Mounted Regiment, part of the Blues and Royals. We have recently passed out of Phase 1 training and are currently working on our ceremonial drills. We have been inspired by both of you gentlemen, both 75 years ago and today. Your efforts in leading us to the victory in Japan during the Second World War should never be forgotten. We can learn so much from you veterans like you both and you continue to inspire us all at the British Army still to this day. You captured the hearts of the world with your amazing fundraising efforts. 
It was an incredible achievement that you and your family should be proud of. Thank you. Private Joseph Hammond, the UK ambassador to Ghana, Lane Walker, has said that you are a force of nature and an inspiration to many. I truly agree with that. Thank you to you both. Joseph, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit, you know, that when you were fighting in, in Burma, you were fighting in the jungle, you know, were you, what was it like, you know, with, because you, you, you talked about the fact that you joined up with your friends and your, your friends were with you, and, you know, did you feel like you, you, you know, you, you'd taken your, you know, you'd taken your community with you to, to this far away place? I mean, did you feel like, you know, you were in the army and, and that was it, or were you, did you feel very much like you were still someone from the Gold Coast who was fighting? Very good question. Uh, I'll go straight to the point. I remember one day my sister died in Gold Coast. And they asked me, they wrote me a letter. I said, nobody should write me about death again. Because me, myself, here right here, I'm like a dead goat. I could die anytime. So please, this fighting matter, is, is, uh, you, uh, if I want to explain it to you, you'll be surprised. That is why I'm, I've, I've made it very short, very brief. But if I want to tell you the suffering, sorrow, pain that we have gone through, it will surprise you, honestly. So please, this is all that I will say to you. Um, and when you got back uh, from, from Burma, I mean, yes. what, was, what was that like, having, having come back, you know, because obviously you've been fighting so far away. Um, and yeah. was it difficult coming back and trying to talk to people about what you'd seen and what you'd experienced? When we ex returned home, 1945 December, with three military bands, many, many people, all the chiefs came, many people wanted to know much about the war. But it, it appears, uh, you know, uh, we were short of words. Whenever, because not one person, many, many people, how the fighting was, how did you, what experience uh, you went through in, in, the, in Burma? This is what went on. We, we told them everything. They were, they were really happy. And we, they realized we have suffered a lot. We suffered a lot. That's all I will say, because if I want to continue to say it, it will surprise you, honestly. It will surprise you. Are you very proud to have served in the British Army? 100% proud. 100% that we were part of the 14th British Army. That inspired, we fought because we knew failure to do this thing, the enemy will come and rule us. No, over our dead bodies, we won't accept that. So we fought ferociously ourselves. And they realized that we were a very good match, honestly. And we were. So I repeat again, I am proud to serve British, to defend the British Empire. I'm very proud. There is nothing that will stop me from saying, I'm very proud that I defended the British Empire. And when I'm called today, I will defend again. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute privilege for us to be able to speak today, to talk about those events 75 years ago, but also to share in the memories you had and also celebrate the amazing accomplishments you've done this year too. Thank you so much for giving up your time. Uh, I don't know if there's one more last thing you'd like to say to each other just as we say goodbye. It's is there anything that, Captain Sir Tom, was there anything you'd like to say to, to Private Joseph just about your, about your shared experience? I, I think that uh, we have all did a very good job. It was very difficult uh, throughout the, the period, uh, particularly in, in, in Burma. It was very difficult, but we did it very well. Whatever, whatever army you were in the, in the Allies, we all did very well. And in the end, we did a very, very good job. And I would say thank you to all the allies who were there fighting with us. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Private Joseph, Captain Sir Tom, Hello. On, on, on behalf of my generation, uh, let me just say thank you so much for everything that you've done, both 75 years ago, but also today. You continue to be an inspiration to us all. Uh, you continue to show the ways in which we can unite to tackle major problems together, and that distance really is no barrier to us coming together to achieve a common goal. 
it's been an absolute privilege and a pleasure for me to talk to you today. And uh, I know I speak for all of our audience when I say, just say thank you so much for everything you've done, everything you continue to do. I hope you stay safe. I hope you stay healthy. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much uh, and goodbye. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for your kind thank remark. You. I appreciate thank you. it. I think we've done a very good job. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very too. much. Thank you. Thank goodbye. You. Captain Sir Tom, how are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. How about you? I'm really, I'm really well, thank you. I'm really, I'm really thrilled to be able to talk to you. It's, uh, it's an absolute privilege. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad it's nice and, it's nice and shady there as well. I don't know how hot it is where you are, but it is, uh, it's pretty toasty where I am. I didn't get a cup of tea then. No, I mean, well, if I could pass this, if I could pass this through, yes, then, please. then I would. <laughs> bye. 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 Bye.